Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live performance here in Palo Alto, Future Ready Stores, redefine the boundaries of the data center. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, our next guest coming in from us, Sam Werner, VP of Product Manager at IBM Storage. Sam, great to see you, thanks for coming on. Great to see you guys, good to be with you again. Sam, where are you? I, I was hoping to see you in studio. I know, uh, I'm actually in London, awesome. uh, believe it or not, at our, one of our watch parties and uh, I think we're going to cut over a little bit later. You'll be able to see the whole group here. I did step out, so it's a little bit more quiet for our discussion. That's awesome. Lo looking forward to seeing those selfies. And thanks for putting that watch party together. We're all around the world as well. So look, let's kick it off. You get the keys to the kingdom over there running product management storage. Uh, it's hard. The AI is a hot topic right now. Everyone wants to know what's going on with their data. You got cyber resilience, security pressures. Give us a, the vision overview of the portfolio of IBM storage and give us a taste for what's happening and how it's evolving and how you're meeting the need, needs of the marketplace. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's interesting. I, last time uh, I was with you guys, I was actually there with you in the studio and I think we talked about this a bit. It was last year. You know, we've been realigning our portfolio and our investments to the challenges our customers are facing. And we've made a lot of progress on it in the last year since we last spoke. In fact, if you throw up my first slide, I'll kind of point out those three key pain points. First of all, um, you know, infrastructure teams are struggling to respond to the increased speed and agility that application teams are trying to achieve. Uh, they're making moves to things like container platforms, changing the way they build applications, and the infrastructure teams are having a hard time keeping up with that. So they're looking for new ways to be more efficient and improve the way they deploy their storage. On top of that, like you said, AI. All the infrastructure teams are trying to figure out how to enable this enterprise AI. It's, it's become mission critical to a lot of organizations. And you have to be able to bring all your data together to be able to get some value out of these solutions. And then the last one, and, and probably one of the most important is around resiliency. When you think about uh, all the things that can happen within a data center to the data, uh, which could result in loss of uh, access to applications and ultimately loss of ability for a business to operate. Uh, customers are trying to figure out, first of all, how do they ensure their enterprise is safe? And number two, how do they respond to regulatory requirements that are emerging around resiliency? So we've developed quite a few new products, built products from scratch like Defender and IBM Storage Fusion. And then we've got a lot of exciting things we're talking about today that I'm excited to get into. You know, Sam, at the top, John and I were talking about uh, how things are changing in terms of, you know, we always talk about bringing compute to data. We're also talking about bringing AI to data. We're talking about bringing protection to data and really minimizing a lot of that heavy lifting that developers have to do. And I think that's part of the theme that I, that I see in your portfolio and the evolution over the last couple of years. That's right. I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the focus we have is, first of all, on how to make management of data simpler, how to make sure the data is always available so you can get the best out of your investments, how to improve operational efficiency so that the cost of managing all of this storage and data is less so that you can support investments into these new initiatives. Uh, and then, you know, lastly, uh, how do we ensure that companies can continue, I mean, this becomes absolutely critical to just continuing the operations of a company. We've seen how enterprises get brought to their knees when an event happens and how they're completely unable to function. So it's more than just simplifying and getting value out of AI, it's the, the ability for a company to operate. Sam, can you talk about the innovations and the advancements you guys are making for that AI world? Because you know, as we see the developer appetite is at an all time high, seeing all the, the models out there on the open source side, as well as the capabilities that they're seeing in, from an app development standpoint. But the hardware underneath, the, the infrastructure is really hard. You can't just flip a switch and throw that, uh, that, that out and bring in new real quick. This is really, it's hard. It's a hard problem to solve, but yet it has to happen faster. Can you take us through what you guys are doing to move fast? What are some of the advancements and innovations specifically to hit those AI powered uh, workloads and or having the right performance and agility? Yeah, I mean, so we we have unique capabilities in our portfolio that allow you to um, leave your data where it is and bring it to the compute uh, as it's needed and give you acceleration so that as you do things like tuning AI models uh, or, you know, inferencing on those AI models, you can get, um, you know, infer things that matter to your company, get insights that matter to your company based on your data. 
But I want to I want to kind of move towards what we're going to be announcing today, which is really around how do we take AI and help it improve how you operate your primary storage. So I've talked a lot about the operations of a company. I want to talk a bit about primary storage, where most of your mission critical applications run, and how you ensure leveraging AI, you can continue uh, operating in all kinds of conditions and improve your efficiency so that you can keep up with the requirements of your application teams. And if you put up my slide number two, I'll take you through the big challenges that our enterprise customers are facing when it comes to primary storage, again, where you run your most mission critical applications. First of all, obviously, data resilience is critical, and it always has been, right? We've been building backup capabilities, DR capabilities, high availability capabilities and storage for years to ensure business continuance in all kinds of events. But with the increased threat of cyber attacks, it requires new approaches to handling this. And, and so we are delivering lots of new innovation here, which we'll get into later in the event. Number two is around efficiency and sustainability. Most of you out there who are watching this, I am sure, uh, are not getting growing budgets to support all these new initiatives. In fact, you're being asked to be much, much more efficient. So you need to reduce the cost per terabyte. You need to reduce power consumption, smaller footprint. You need to be able to become much, much more efficient and effective uh, in, in how you do things so that you can manage this within your budget and keep up with the requirements of your organization. And then the last thing, we're so excited about generative AI, we all are, but how do I leverage that to make my operations more efficient in managing storage? It's hard to get the skills to manage the storage. Having everybody need to be a PhD to manage it is unrealistic. So how can I bring AI into the storage system, both to help with the data resilience, but also with the operations? And then the last thing, which I know anyone out there who's a storage person deals with all the time, is going through this constant tech refresh. It takes so much work, right? Every three to four years, I got to bring in the newest technology so I can make sure I'm up on the curve and I have to go through these long cycles. I have to bring in procurement. It's expensive and it's painful. And then you have to migrate applications. And by the way, if you didn't size the applications the right way to begin with, you might actually be doing migration and bringing a new storage earlier than you thought, even before the three or four years. And then you have to figure out how to migrate. Those are the challenges we're trying to help our customers with today. Yeah, and at the same time, you've got to you've got to be performant. I saw I was looking through some of the announcement data, and I saw some 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 maybe not benchmarks, but just sort of sort of uh, comparisons. I think I saw some legitimate like 70-30 read-write ratio. I saw some compression, so you're doing some data reduction. I think the example you used was three to one. So they were certainly very uh, real world-like. So you've got to perform. And I, I wonder if you could address your competitive posture. It's a very competitive market. Customers have choice. Where is your differentiation? How do you, how do you think about uh, the competition? How do you talk to customers about your advantage? Yeah, that's a great question. And we'll bring up slide three because a lot of people say, make big statements that they're the fastest and they're the most efficient and they just say it, right? I can tell you exactly why we have the best price performance in the industry and why we have the best density and why we're the easiest to manage. We have some really unique innovations that others do not. I mean, it starts at its core with the flash core module. We've talked about it before with you. This is our own drive. It's an industry standard form factor drive, but it has some really unique capabilities to it. Number one, we use QLC memory. We get the enterprise durability and performance of a standard TLC drive, but we get higher density and lower cost. But on top of that, we have unique hardware in there that we offload functions from the array onto it. So for example, we have real-time ransomware detection directly in the drive. We look at literally every IO that comes into the drive and we look for ransomware attacks on it. Number two, and I, I think I'm probably running low on time maybe from the looks on your faces. No, no, but, you, can, uh, oh, you got time. No, we got five minutes. Good, yeah. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> so number two, we have one single software stack that goes across the entire flash system family. We're going to be talking a lot about a new flash system today, 
But I can tell you all the capabilities we have beyond just the new one we're talking about today are equivalent across all the products from entry all the way to high end. We're one single software stack where many of our competitors require multiple, which means when we deliver things like automation and AI into the product, you get it on the entire portfolio. On top of that, we have our AI ops platform, Storage Insights, which gives you the ability to simplify management. And we have new capabilities there that allow you to manage your entire fleet as a single grid and give you the ability to migrate applications seamlessly between different arrays so that as you do run out of capacity, as an application starts consuming more resources than you expected, you don't have to go through this complex procurement process of getting new storage and bringing it in and then figuring out how to move an application then finding a window that you can you know, reboot servers. This all can happen seamlessly. You can move it around. I think so that's also really unique. And by the way, we have all one software platform across entry, mid-range and high end. And then the last piece I'll mention is, and we're gonna talk about this today a lot, we're making it way easier to buy our storage. So now you can buy it with a long-term view not have to go through tech refresh cycles. Let us guarantee your SLAs and ensure you're always on the latest technology as you need it. Sam, I really appreciate you commenting on the competitor piece. That's awesome. And I love the consumption piece. This is the ease of use factor that, that is kind of talked about, but it's hard to deliver. Making it consumable, but also having the energy for the staff to focus on the AI missions that are out there. So I have to ask you, with that kind of being said, you seem to be perfectly positioned for what people are doing. How would you summarize um, the announcements today and that we're going to be going through? For the folks watching, how would you put a bumper sticker on this? What's the big takeaway here? <laughs> the way I like to say it is it's the last storage you'll ever buy because what we're going to do is we're going to give you storage that'll meet all your requirements. And as you um, you know, as your applications grow, as you need more capacity, we'll take care of that for you. And all you have to do, we give you predictable pricing over time. And all you have to do is run your business. And as applications need to move around, we make it really, really easy. A couple clicks and your application moves over to another array where it has more performance. And we will continue to enhance the AI to make it really simple to choose where to put it, where you have the capacity and how you're going to manage it. So again, the last storage you'll ever buy will be this new flash system family we're talking about today. You know, the only thing there, Sam, is you got to be willing to give up forklift upgrades. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, our box, well, you'll see it. It's pretty small. I don't think you need a forklift to carry it. So uh, it's pretty simple. And then, you know, we're not talking disruptive upgrades, right? We're talking about simple, seamless movement of your applications to your new system. And they are pretty cool looking too. Um, so, you know, I think you'll be excited to see them coming into your data centers. Sam, we really appreciate you and, and great job in London. Say hello to the watch party. Final word, put the final word in here. What are you guys working on? What's on the roadmap? What can we expect now? It's the last story people are going to buy. It's going to be invisible and just working behind the scenes. What's next on the product roadmap? What are you focused on next? Well, I mean, back to your AI initiatives, I think you're going to see a lot from us there. We're uh, working with some really large uh, deployments on the training side, where we have the best storage for training, very high performance with the ability to cache in data from wherever it's needed. And then we also provide the complete integrated infrastructure for doing inferencing and tuning of your AI models with Watson X. And we can bring the complete turnkey solution for your enterprise as well on that. That's not today's topic, but maybe uh, maybe our next cube will be all about what we're doing there. Absolutely, got to love the AI wave here, being on the right wave, having storage work just work and be invisible and focus all your energy on that creativity. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate you from London and uh, thanks for coming on virtually onto our set in Palo Alto, California, appreciate you. Thank you, great all talking right. to you. Next up is Audrey O'Donnell, product manager for IBM Flash Systems. We're going to talk about new ways to optimize the IT budget coming up next. Stay with us.